and welcome. I have the great pleasure and honor to be here today with Tabitha Logan. Welcome to WH in our interview series. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here tonight. Yes, and uh, Tabitha is actually uh, one of the co-founders of YPSN. But before we dig a bit deeper into YPSN, tell us a little bit about yourself. Thanks, Karina. Um, well, yeah, my name is Tabitha. I'm originally from the UK. Uh, and I came out to Hong Kong probably about 12 years ago now. Um, came out on a bit of a whim uh, to have a bit of an adventure and then was pretty lucky to fall into the maritime industry um, and started my career working with a law firm and then with ship owners. And I've been in the maritime industry ever since. Wow, and you said you hadn't planned that, so you actually came on vacation here to Hong Kong? Yeah, correct. A bit to my family's horror. Uh, I came out for a few weeks holiday to visit a friend and basically had the best three weeks of my life and thought, well, there's nothing holding me back in the UK, so why not have a look around, see if there's any job opportunities. And was lucky enough to find something in Hong Kong and quit my job and ended up shipping my stuff over and then the rest is history. Fantastic. And you said you didn't really join the maritime industry in the first place. So first you joined a legal firm? Yeah, correct. I mean, the maritime industry is something that not too many people, unless you're involved in it or have family in it, are too aware of. So I, my, I studied law. So when I was applying for jobs in Hong Kong, I applied to law firms. And I got a job with a law firm called Clyde & Co. Um, and at the time, I didn't know that they were a maritime, for, a maritime firm. So I started working there and was exposed to the maritime industry and I was working with captains in our office and kind of understanding about ships and thought, actually, this is really fascinating. Fantastic. So a lot of the stereotypes that we may have don't totally hold true. Uh, no, I would say I've been pleasantly surprised. I mean, I think uh, there is a conception that the maritime industry is uh, very male dominated and quite old fashioned and for them, uh, I'd say a while ago that was definitely true. Um, there's a lot of family businesses, it's quite a private industry, but that's slowly starting to change. And I'd say that my experience in the last 10 to 12 years has been completely positive. Um, actually, they actively encourage young people, they actively encourage women, they actually really want to sort of bring a bit of diversity. But the problem was that just not many people understood uh, what the maritime industry was about. So yeah, no, I think, Actually, the people are completely the best thing about the industry. They're very interesting people. I had a captain that's that opposite me who sailed at sea for many years and had great stories about being on ships and in different ports. And I thought, okay, I can I can be in this industry. It's very exciting. Fantastic. And you actually mentioned that it's a very um, diverse industry in terms of job opportunities, right, and different expertise. So not only if you build ships and you're you're a captain, you can find great opportunities, right? Yeah, that's what, something that we really try and promote um, is the fact that whatever you're interested in, whether you're interested in insurance, or well, there's marine insurance, if you're interested in law, there's maritime law, whether you're interested in finance or ship finance, whether you want to negotiate, um, you've got a great sort of personality, you can go buy and sell ships, you can design ships, you can sail on ships, you can do anything. I mean, there really is an area of the industry that suits absolutely everybody. So for me, it's been in the commercial side, working for an actual ship owner, um, but I've got friends in the legal field, in the finance field, um, captains, I mean, yeah, something to suit everybody. Fantastic, and you said it's actually very international and you can do the job in any different port and it's very easy yeah. to, to Yeah, I think that's the best thing. I mean, the, the rules are the same wherever you are, so I can do this job in Hong Kong, Singapore, London, Dubai, uh, West Africa, I mean, the rules are the same, it's a very international business, the people you work, they're international, the language is English, um, the laws are the same wherever you are, I mean, to a certain extent. So yeah, it's a job that's very transferable, um, and you can move around the world with it, which offers young people a fantastic opportunity. Okay, fantastic. Well, you stayed in Hong Kong, um, but you built and founded uh, YPSN. Yeah. Tell us more about YPSN. Okay. Well, when, we first, when I first entered the industry, I started going to a lot of networking events. And I was going to these events, and they were great, but they were a little bit um, stuffy and old-fashioned, and they were a lot in sort of these old uh, clubs and hotels, and it was quite a formal environment. And the people I was networking with were amazing. They were CEOs and CFOs and very senior people. And I realized they have been in the industry for many years. They had their own networks. They built up their career, and they were at the top of the ladder, whereas I was kind of starting my career and I thought well where are the people that I'm going to be networking with and working with for the next few years they must be out there 
Um, but there was no events that were really tailored for them, sort of a bit more relaxed, a bit more casual, kind of um, focusing on what sort of the younger generation needed, which was supporting their career, the chance to network with their own peers. Um, so we decided to start YPSN and it started out with just a casual get together in a bar. We put a tab behind the bar, we said invite your friends for your friends and the very first event, I think 50 people showed up. And that was fantastic because we thought they're out there, they exist, but they just hadn't been encouraged or maybe felt comfortable in the environments that were existing in Hong Kong at the time. And so it blossomed from there and now we have over a thousand members in Hong Kong. Our networking events have 250 people on average and we do debates, seminars, we do a big football tournament every year, we do ship visits, we go into schools and universities. Um, and yeah, it's been a fantastic uh, response and also the maritime community has really got behind us, which is great. Fantastic. And so you shortened it to YPSN, so yeah. the full name is for Young, young Professionals. professionals. Yeah, in Shipping Network. It's a bit of a mouthful. network. Okay, yeah. yeah, well, yeah. YPSN is much easier, but we didn't think about that 10 years ago. Yes, well, the speed is increasing, right? The world is accelerating, so I have to shrink that down. Okay, and now, um, after how long has the organization this 10 years? So after 10 years, you reach out to the tech and startup and innovation community. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about, more about this initiative. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it was our 10 year anniversary and for a couple of years we've been trying to think of, we had in mind this project, something that was a bit more impactful, left more um, of a lasting impression and something that maybe had a bit more global application. And in the last couple of years, as, uh, we've been discussing that shipping industry has embraced, started to embrace technology a lot more. And we realized actually we could put together, um, by leveraging on our network that we've built over 10 years, we could bring everybody together and basically launch a startup competition. Um, and we decided to do this so that we could um, interact with the startup community and engage with them and try and um, help them understand a bit about our industry and understand um, what the problems are that we're facing and what we need to create a sustainable future and realize that actually you need to sort of look outside your own sphere of influence to get a new take on things, a new perspective on things, new ideas and sort of shake things up and transform the industry. Fantastic. And the name of this competition is The Captain's Table yeah. um, and that there's also a story behind that, right? Yeah, yeah, we were a little bit inspired, I guess, by Dragon's Den or Shark's Tank and uh, these shows where you're pitching to a panel of investors, but obviously ours is maritime related, so hence why we called it the captain's table. And our concept is that uh, the finalists will be pitching to the captains of industry. We're going to have six or seven captains at the final in November, um, and you know the finalists are vying to win a seat at the captain's table, so they get to sit with these captains of industry and uh, learn industry. from them and uh, gain some advice and wisdom and everything else. So that's why we call it the captain's table. So it's got a bit of a maritime spin to it. Fantastic. And the table is here in Hong Kong, but the experts and the startups come from around the world. Yeah, actually they do. Um, it's a really diverse panel. We've tried to make it diverse because we don't want it to just be maritime experts. We have to have experts in fintech. We have to have experts in the environment and regulatory aspects. We've got insure tech, um, but we've also got venture capitalists. Um, so yeah, I would say that we've got um, judges from Europe, uh, New York and Hong Kong. So it's a bit of a mixture. We've also got female judges. We've tried to make it a really diverse panel. So we've got uh, three venture capitalists. We've got a couple of uh, maritime uh, sort of leaders. And we've also got experts in technology um, as well who can obviously um, analyze the tech side of things. Um, Fantastic. So you got male and female captains and that reminds yeah. me of one of the fun facts, you know, as you know, I love to ask that one fun fact um, about our guests. So tell us a little bit about your, your fun fact. Yeah. Well, as I said, the maritime industry is uh, steeped in history and tradition. And with my very first job, my boss was very encouraging and he said, the only way you learn is to go on board a ship. So I said, okay. So he said, you're going to uh, sea for five days. And I was sailing from Port Klang in Malaysia to Indonesia. Um, but little did I know that actually it's considered very bad luck to have females on board a ship. Um, Still, yeah. these um, days, maybe, 2019. <laughs> yeah, maybe for some, some okay. people. So I got on board the ship and basically was told that I had to dress as a man. Um, <laughs> so I wore a boiler suit for two days, uh, five days, had my hair tied up, no makeup, and basically had to be as discreet as possible because uh, the crew were very suspicious of having a female on board. But it was quite refreshing. It was refreshing. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, and so the winning startup, what can the winning startup expect? Um, what I yeah, and as I said, we've 
really kind of utilised our network and we've put together a great ecosystem. I mean, apart from obviously um, a cash prize, we've got at the moment 25,000 US dollars uh, on offer. But apart from that, we've really um, put together a great panel of mentors, uh, actual investors in terms of access to capital. Um, we've talked to our members about product testing. We've got people offering tech support legal support in terms of if you want to understand about protecting your IP or registering your company because this is the first time we're doing it. It's a bit of a prototype and we're not too sure at what stage um, these startups will be. So we've tried to put together something um, that can suit everybody. And what we're asking of all these startups when they apply is to tell us what they want to get out of this competition. So what is it that you need? Do you need access to clients? Do you need access to product testing environments? Do you need access to technology to make your idea Perhaps it's at the concept stage of reality. Um, or to adapt it right to the very specific exactly, pain points, as we say, exactly. right? Yeah. There might be some technologies or startups that are already you know, being in use or applied yeah, in the retail sector, and you industry. could transfer them to Exactly. And your you know, apart, apart from all that, there's obviously the media exposure. The final at uh, the Asia Society is going to be broadcast live on television and, well, on, uh, web, on the websites of our yeah. press sponsors. So that in terms of media exposure to the industry, there's also that aspect of it um, so yeah we really think that we've got and we've also got access to incubator programs and accelerators as well through partnerships in Europe and also in Hong Kong so we've pretty much got something we've decided to commit we want to commit at least 12 months of support to the, the winning uh, startup we don't want to just say you've won see you later we want to follow it through for at least a year and hope that we can add value to them Fantastic, really meaningful, long-term yeah. support, yeah. and we're thrilled to be a supporting organization of this yeah, initiative. Thank you so much. And we will promote, you know, the application details. We can only encourage you to apply to this really amazing um, program and opportunity. Now, in ending, we always talk about sort of passion and try to understand um, what is it that keeps you passionate and alive because it can be a bumpy road. And I guess even YPSN, you had moments where it was a little bit easier or a little bit more difficult. Yeah. How do you define your passion? And yeah, I think that's a really good question, actually. I mean, it's something, as I said, we've done this, we've had this organization for 10 years and I think the beginning part was a bit of a struggle because we were trying to get this message across and say, you need to invest in young people, you need to invest in talent, you know, because the industry is only going to be sustainable if you have the next generation coming up to kind of take the reins. And for a while we felt it was falling on deaf ears, but we didn't give up. We decided, you know, this is something we believe in. And I think, I think the main thing is that I'm really passionate about my industry and I'm never bored and I'm always challenged. And I think I'm really passionate about the maritime and logistics industry. So knowing that, I want to give that opportunity to other people and I want this industry to be sustainable for the future. So I think when you ask about passion, it actually probably is passion. It's passion for the <laughs> industry. And I guess we've been rewarded in keeping and sticking at our message for the last 10 years and seeing the maritime community and the government actually come behind us in this initiative and say, we believe in you, makes all the hard work worthwhile. Fantastic. And now with the captain's table, you're opening another chapter. Um, and that is obviously very, very exciting. So thank you so much. Um, you. So we have Tanita um, here with us today, co-founder of the YPSN. And thank you so much. We're thrilled. Don't forget to apply for the captain's table. And thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Great. <laughs> thank, you. thank you very much. Thank you.